Hello and welcome to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I'm your host for today, Geraldine Bissett Joseph. World Alzheimer's Day falls on September the 21st this year, and it also World Alzheimer's Month is actually recognized throughout the month of September. Now, with this in mind, I am joined today by Regina Pozva, who is the president of the St. Lucia. Um, let me get this right, as Alzheimer and Dementia Association. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you, thank okay. you. Now, I, I'm glad you joined us because not only do I want to ask you about the day and the month, I, I believe it's actually critical that if, even though some people might know a little bit about the disease, if they could know a little bit more. So before we even get into the fact that the month is happening in September, mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about um, Alzheimer's and a little bit about dementia? What exactly um, does the, the, the disease entail? Okay, so dementia overall is an umbrella term for a collection of symptoms which um, affect our, could be our memory, our ability to problem solve, um, swallowing, thinking, movement. There's a whole list of um, areas that it affects. Mm -hmm. Now, dementia is not a disease itself, mm -hmm. it's a collection of the symptoms now. Okay. Alzheimer's falls under that, which is the disease. So Alzheimer's is what's causing the dementia. Oh, okay. You now you see this. That's why I was saying because I didn't <laughs> even know that. Because you even mentioned like swallowing in there. I didn't even know that was even oh, yeah. part of it as well. Yeah. Okay. Now is everybody actually susceptible to the disease, or is it hereditary, or you know? It's actually not prejudice at all. There's okay. no rhyme or reason of why people collect. Um, receive the um, condition. Mm -hmm. There is some genetics, it's extremely rare, mm -hmm. um, but it mainly hits people, the number one risk factor is after 65. Okay. So age is a factor, but it's not, you're not gonna develop it just because you're 65 and older. Okay, There's now tell us a little bit about the disease. I mean, um, we might have loved ones, we might have loved ones who are a certain age, and maybe we're, you know, they might just a little, be a little bit forgetful and such like. Mm -hmm. But how can we really, um, you know, maybe, what are the symptoms people should look out for to see that that could actually signify that maybe a relative does actually have um, Alzheimer's? Well, there, there are symptoms, and as we age, our brain slows down, mm -hmm. but um, that doesn't mean it stops. Mm -hmm. So when we're having little problems with forgetting, we usually remember later. Mm -hmm. If we're not forgetting at all, I mean, if we're forgetting and not remembering at all, <clears throat> then that's a, a huge symptom, like things that we normally do. For mm -hmm. instance, when we're older, we still cook and do certain things mm -hmm. in the kitchen, mm -hmm. <clears throat> make certain meals. If we're starting to skip ingredients, then mm -hmm. there's a problem, even mm -hmm. at 65 and older, because mm -hmm. that's something we just don't normally, that's an automatic, remember, that's an automatic memory. Okay. So that would be a sign, that would be a sign that something is going on. So anything that you normally do, mm -hmm. and then you're, you're forgetting how to do it, mm -hmm. something that's normal. Okay, now I've, I also um, have read up a little bit about um, uh, the Alzheimer's as well, and I believe there are things that they, um, that it, uh, people suggest that maybe older people can do to keep their brains more active. Mm -hmm. What kind of things are those that they, could, they say that could help, um, you know, Alzheimer's actually staying in? I mean, first of all, is that true, that pe there are things that people can do? And if so, what are those kind of activities that might actually help? Okay, first, um, there is no cure at all for Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. um, but there are things that we can do to strengthen our brain mm -hmm. uh, memory, okay. no matter what age we are. Mm -hmm. um, it's simple things by learning something new and something that you enjoy to do. Okay. Um, the brain activities, there's a lot of controversy on some of those, so the key thing in all of those brain activities is to like it. Okay. If you don't like it and you're doing it just for exercise sake, mm -hmm. it's not gonna have that much of effect. Mm 
Okay. Especially if we're aging, we want something to have a strong effect. Mm -hmm. So you really want to like it. <laughs> okay. Now, is it again? Uh, is it that we, we know, as you you mentioned, it's kind of like um, age related. Is mm -hmm. that because we slow down as we get older, though? Is that a case of and and maybe we're not as active, so uh, we're not using our brain as much, or is it just a case of as the brain gets older, this could actually set in? Well, it's not because of age that it's. The reason why the age is probably a risk is mm -hmm. because when we retire, you're right, um, we're not as active. We don't mm -hmm. exercise the brain mm -hmm. as much. We tend to want to sit down, watch TV more, go and relax more, not really do anything to challenge ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots of people in their 90s and 100s who are extremely active and very sharp and point on. Okay. So that's normal aging. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, also, let me just ask you, um, Again, uh, is there anything that maybe um, you could advise people to do if they do see the symptoms within a relative or if whether they, they think that maybe their, their relative may be suffering from Alzheimer's, what would be the first actions they could take? Um, go to the doctor and um, be tested because there's a lot of symptoms of dementia that mimic um, the disease. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> But things like um, vitamin deficiency, mm -hmm. hormonal imbalances, mm -hmm. all of those can contribute to the same type of symptoms. Oh, okay. The challenge with that is if you leave it alone, even stress can cause that. Um, if you leave it alone and let it fester and it just builds up and builds up, then um, it can develop into a type of dementia. And you don't want to ignore it just because you're, you're, you're just saying, oh, well, it's probably stress or something. If it's a hormonal, like thyroid, for instance, mm -hmm. um, there are some thyroid um, conditions like hypothyroidism. Um, once you take care of that, you still have some symptoms, mm -hmm. but at least you've taken care of the major part of it and it doesn't develop into dementia. Okay. Um, and then, of course, removing the thyroid for those that are hyperthyroid and the symptoms can be relieved. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, there's other conditions, vitamin D deficiency. You take mm -hmm. care of that and the symptoms resolve. Okay. Alcohol related mm -hmm. dementia. You quit drinking, you mm -hmm. do a therapeutic treatment of thiamine, um, you can reverse most of the symptoms. And those are all reversible, mm -hmm. but um, doing something about it early on, mm -hmm. not waiting till the condition is so far into it, because once it's into the middle stages, it's hard to reverse all of that. Oh, okay. And that's where you run into trouble, and it mm -hmm. just progresses as, you, as time goes by. Okay, okay, all right, okay. Now, let's move on to World Alzheimer's Month and, and, and Day. Um, tell us a little bit about the month and day. How did it come about that um, September was chosen to be recognized and even the 21st was chosen to be recognized? Well, um, it started be, uh, probably about in the 19, 90s is when um, when the disease was being associations were were collectively um, trying to bring the awareness about the the disease and so though uh, Alzheimer's Disease International was trying to support other associations and they came together to um, bring awareness and what they did was did um, interesting things in the month which was like light um, a whole building purple mm -hmm. and things like that just to bring the awareness and they were trying to find ways to collectively globally bring awareness because mm -hmm. they knew at that time there was probably um, 35 million people at that time mm -hmm. who were who were um, affected by the disease and so they just wanted to just I mean, I'm, I'm not sure exactly why they picked September mm -hmm. but they all decided that, that was especially the Alzheimer's Disease International they collected um, September mm -hmm. as the month and then they um, launched that probably the they launched the day I think in 1990s the okay. middle 1990s okay so. now collectively on a, on a world scale um, what kind of things actually done in recognition of uh, well there's walks there's okay. Alzheimer's walks um, there's there's well fundraisers, research, there's also, um, well, the World Health Organization, they're involved with a lot of uh, um, awareness and dementia plans trying to make it a more of a global, global mm -hmm. effect. Um, because it is going to affect a lot of people. It is affecting a lot of people. So. Okay. All right. Now, I know there's an initiative yourself that you want to talk about here, but before we do, I think it's time that we take just a small break. So please don't go anywhere, and we'll see you after the break. 
Oh, you realize you step on my toe. Well, do something about it. Gasa, I burst in that man. Hold on. If somebody try to cross you, Hold and if Martin start to take you, Hold no need for war or violence, cause the police there to help you. Hold if a trouble start in this session, alright, no need for aggression. Hold we don't want no violence in the place. Control your temper, respect each other. Don't let no trouble escalate, cause you know better. Control your temper, respect each other. Don't let no trouble escalate, cause you know better. Control your temper. A message from Mission Boys, Studio 758, Acid Creations, and the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Welcome back to Issues and Answers. I am Jolene B. St. Joseph, and today I am joined by Regina Posva, who's the president of the St. Lucia, um, St. Lu the president of the St. Lucia <laughs> Alzheimer and Dementia Association. That's right? Very good, yes. Ah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, we were talking before again about World um, Alzheimer Day and Alzheimer uh, Month. You mentioned the color purple a couple of times, mm -hmm. yeah? Now, I know there's an initiative that you would like to even push here in St. Lucia as part of the St. Lucia Association. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we would like to encourage um, people to wear something purple on every Friday just to recognize and acknowledge um, Alzheimer's and other related dementias just to bring the awareness about so. Okay. All right. Now, again, we, had, we talked uh, about the, the whole month and, and day on a, a global scale. Is there anything that's actually, apart from the purple, that might be actually taking place in St. Lucia that we should know about? Uh, well, we're doing information and memory clinics. Oh, we're, okay. <clears throat> we're having one Saturday in, in um, Gros the Massey at, at mm -hmm. the JQ Mall. Mm -hmm. So and we'll do blood pressures, checks. Um, blood sugar checks because those are actually um, risk factors um, oh. towards developing dementia. Okay. So um, if you don't, if you have uncontrolled diabetes or uncontrolled hypertensive, those mm -hmm. are major risk factors of developing dementia. Okay. So we like to um, check those too. So we will give out some information. The ten warning signs we have, the warning signs that the Lions Club of Grisele have really been um, helping us and um, yeah. So. There's a few things going on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. A couple good. memory cafes that we do too. Okay. So, which is at the end of the month, which mm -hmm. is where we invite people with dementia and their families, mm -hmm. and they come into a social setting, okay. and we try to do an activity with them. Okay. So it gives them a break. It gives okay. them a break from okay. care. Would you say, I mean, um, this is not even a question I have there, but as you just mentioned, um, people with dementia here in St. Lucia, would you say that the disease is as recognized here as maybe the other places that people might go to, whereas um, if a family member is suffering, families are quick on the uptake to, to you know, get something done and such likes? No, a lot of it is um, um, seen as, as normal aging. Mm. Um, and I believe that in the Caribbean area, nine people out of 10 that are living with it mm -hmm. um, go undiagnosed. Mm. And so with no support at all. And it's, it's a problem globally because even in the uh, higher income countries, uh, four of them are only diagnosed out of 10. Oh, so wow. it's, it's a big, huge thing. So getting the awareness about the symptoms and everything is real important to um, share so that doctors can um, pay attention more. And, and it, you, you might get doctors that might just call it normal aging because the doctors need to, the medical team, our medical team mm -hmm. all over need mm -hmm. to be um, educated on it as well. Right. And okay. so you as an advocate, um, really need to go back to the doctor and say, no, I'm, I'm worried about my memory. Can we do some more testing? Mm -hmm. So, Okay. Now tell me about the St. Lucian Association as well, because I didn't even know there was one. So okay. tell me a little bit about the association. How long have you guys been in operation? Um, who is involved and how, if I would like to get involved, for example, how could I go about that? Okay, we first started off with uh, caregiving um, awareness with Angels of the West Indies. And mm -hmm. we've been around since, um, for about five years, mm -hmm. since 2013. Mm -hmm. And uh, it eventually branched off into the association as more people were, were recognizing it and families were, were wanting some help and wanting to share the awareness as mm -hmm. well. So 
right now what we can do, I mean, what a person can do is just call, mm -hmm. call in. We don't have an office per se, but what we normally do is when someone calls us, mm -hmm. uh, we go out, we, we talk to the, to the family, and then we go out and we assess the person, see where they're at, and then make recommendations. A lot of times, I would say 90% um, 90, 90 of the time, um, they're unaware if it's dementia or not. So we give them advice and recommendations to go to a doctor and ask the doctor for certain types of tests. Okay. Or just to, depending on the doctor, the doctor, some doctors know what kind of tests to, to um, do to rule mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. memory, memory problems and things like that. So that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. So when they have symptoms and they're worried, just calling, calling us is, is a good step. <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. All right. Then. Now, if I was just a person as well that just wanted to get involved in the association, for example, is there a way I could go about doing that as well? Yeah, you can let us know too. We have a, a volunteer and um, we would love volunteers. We appreciate that. That's, that's, that's the um, support of the whole association is the volunteers. Okay, all right. So. Now we're going to be wrapping up very shortly, but before I go, I just want to know, is there anything that you would like to say to people out there in regards to the disease? Because yes, we have the, the month, we have the day, and I mean, I'm sitting here with you because we are in September mm -hmm. and it's the month and such like. But on a, on a grander scale, what would you like to say to people about um, um, checking on their own health and, 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 and checking on the health of their loved ones as they get older in regards to um, Alzheimer's and dementia? Uh, well, I, I would like to really express that it doesn't affect just the person with dementia. It affects the family as well. Mm -hmm. It's a huge impact on the family. So it's no longer just a person disease. It's a family. It's a society. It's a, it's a global problem. And mm -hmm. so I would like people to be a little bit more friendly in St. Lucia about it and mm -hmm. um, ask for the uh, presentations, the awareness. We'll come out and do um, training. Mm -hmm. So we're more than happy to educate. Okay. That's a big thing for us is we like to educate people on it and make them more aware. Okay. Now I'm putting you on the spot a bit here, but um, is there a, a website? Is there a number, anything like that that people could actually use um, in regards to getting in touch with the association or even um, just to find out more information about the disease? Yes. Um, Angels of the West Indies um, has a lot of information on the website. Mm -hmm. um, you just Google angelsofthewestindies.com. Um, the phone number is 486-4509, and we're more than happy to send you information. Um, the website has some, and then it'll also link to the association. We're in the process of developing the one for the association specifically. Okay. But on Facebook, there's a, a group, the St. Lucia Alzheimer's, and so there's a list of information on there. There's mm -hmm. lot, lots of files, the warning signs and all of that. Mm -hmm. So, and it can redirect you to okay. where you need to go. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank I know you. it's been a short time, but to me, we've been able to get a lot of information out there and that's what's good, important. Good, good, yeah. yes. So again, thank you for joining us. Thank you out there for tuning in to the National Television Network and tuning into Issues and Answers. Do stay tuned, however, from all of us here at Issues and Answers. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>